lifestyle environmentalism, um, you know, that advocates for uh, more time intensive ways of, of doing things that, you know, romanticizes sort of farms and gardens as these, as these spaces that exist outside the capitalist system, um, really disproportionately burden certain populations, especially women, but even more so women uh, of lower class um, and uh, disenfranchised uh, socioeconomic groups in the developed world. Um, but also uh, even more so in, in the developing world. You know, when we romanticize small farms as being sort of this dreamy antidote to, uh, to, to capitalism and technology and, and all that us environmentalists feel is wrong in the world, we basically um, allow the systems that, that perpetuate these sort of inequities to, uh, to continue. Things aren't perfect um, in, in developed countries, but there does tend to be uh, less uh, of a discrepancy between the amount of time that men and women are, are participating in unpaid labor daily. But in the developing world, uh, this tends to be much, much more. And, and women tend to uh, form the bulk of the rural global poor. Um, they tend to perform much more unpaid labor, and they tend to have uh, a lot less access to these time-saving devices that might enable them to uh, engage in other pursuits. It's not just, and I think that, you know, without, you know, some sort of recognition of intensification, um, you know, genetically modified crops, um, and other ways in which life can be made easier, um, this, just, this just isn't going to uh, become equitable.